merely by saying that we can form to MC Session Delegate and MC Browser View Controller Delegate, your code won't build anymore. This is because these two protocols combined have seven required methods you need to implement just to be compatible. Helpfully, for this project, you can effectively ignore three of them. Two of them are trivial, and one further is just for diagnostic information. That leaves only one method that's non-trivial and important to the program. Let's tackle the ones we can effectively ignore. Of course, you can't ignore required methods, otherwise they wouldn't be required. But these methods aren't ones that do anything useful to our program, so we can just create empty methods. Remember, once you've said you conform to a protocol, Xcode's code completion gets updated, so you can just start typing the first few letters of a method name in order to have Xcode prompt you with a list to choose from. So first, we'll do three methods we have to provide, but don't actually need any code inside them. I'll go right to the bottom to make some space. And the first one's called did receive a stream. We've got to provide it. We don't care what that is, just ignore it. No code in there at all. Next, we're going to type did start receiving. And Xcode will show us two options here, one for did start receiving and one for did finish receiving. We need both of these things, so I'll do the first one now. This is did start receiving resource with name from peer with progress. That's irrelevant, that can go. Then I'll type did start receive again and choose the other option. This time it's did finish receiving and we're given from peer and a local URL. But all three of these are very long method names, so please make sure you use co-completion to avoid problems. The two methods we're going to implement that are trivial are both for the multi-peer browser. One is called when it finishes successfully and one when the user cancels. Both methods just need to dismiss the view controller that's currently being presented, which means their entire code is just dismiss animated true. So we'll say in here, browser view controller did finish. So there we'll say dismiss animated true. And then browser view controller was canceled. And again, dismiss animated true like that. So do nothing at all on dismissing the browser view controller. Brilliant. Isn't it easy being a coder? There are two methods left. One that's used in this project only for diagnostic information and one that's actually useful. Let's eliminate the diagnostic method first so we can focus on the interesting bit. When a user connects or disconnects from our session, the method session did change state is called. So you know what's changed. Is someone connecting? Are they now connected? Or have they just disconnected? We're not going to be using this information in the project, but I do want to show you how it might be used by printing out some diagnostics. This is really helpful for debugging, because it means you look inside Xcode's debug console to see these messages and know your code's all working. When this method's called, you'll be told which peer change state and what their new state is. There are only three possible session states, not connected, connecting, and connected. So we can make our app print out useful information just by using switch case and a bit of print. So we'll make some space and say session did change. And that's our option there, boom. So it'll tell us this session here, for this peer did change to this session state here. And we can switch on that and take some appropriate action. So we'll say for our code, switch on the state. If it happens to be case connected, then print out connected and string interpolation, their peer ID dot display name, the name of the person who connected. I'll copy and paste that a few times. So we have case connected and then case connecting and then case not connected. And now fill in, we have connected, then connecting and finally not connected. Now, as you've seen previously, this is one of those enums that has possible future cases that we don't recognize at this point. So we either have to have an unknown default case or have a regular default case. Now, in this case, connected and connecting makes sense to have distinct work for, and not connected could be used as an unknown default case. We could say something like uh, default colon here to have that work for the unknown future cases. Uh, in this case, though, I'm not really sure it really works because it could be some other case that doesn't really apply to not connected. So instead, we're going to let Xcode fill us in with a default unknown case instead. I'll press here, then choose fix. 
we'll get a new case called at unknown default. This will only be used for unknown future cases that are not one of these three things here. And I'm gonna say instead, not fatal error, that means crash our app, uh, but instead unknown state received for that peer ID. And that just leaves one more method that must be implemented before we're fully compliant with the protocols. But before I talk you through it, you need to know how the core of this app works. It's not hard, but it is important, so please listen carefully. Right now, when we add a picture to the collection view, it's shown on our screen, but doesn't go anywhere else. We're going to add some code to the image pickers did finish picking media with info method, so when an image is added, it also gets sent out to our peers. Sending images across a multi-peer connection is surprisingly easy. In project 10, we use the method JPEG data to convert a UI image into a data object, so it can be saved to disk. And here we'll be using ping data that does the same thing with a ping image format. Once we have that, MC session objects have a send data method that will ensure that data gets transmitted reliably to your peers. Once the data arrives at each peer, the method session did receive from peer will get called with that data, at which point we can create a UI image from it and add it to our images array. There is one catch. When you receive data, it might not be on the main thread and you never manipulate UI anywhere but the main thread, right? Right. So now let's implement the final protocol method to catch data being received in our session. We'll say session did receive. And you'll see this receives some sort of data from a peer. So first, we're gonna push our work to the main thread. We're gonna say dispatch queue dot main dot async. And inside there, we're gonna do weak self in. So we can safely manipulate the UI. First, we'll make a UI image from our data by saying if let image is a UI image using the data we have passed in. I'll do data is our data. If that works successfully, we can now insert that into our images array by saying self question mark dot images dot insert that image at index zero and self question mark dot collection view dot reload data. So add it to our array and reload our collection view. And again, I cannot reiterate this enough We've got to push work to the main thread if you want to do any UI work, just to be safe. Now the final piece of code to finish up this whole project is the part that sends image data to peers. This is so easy you might not even believe me. In fact, the code is only as long as it is because there's some error checking in there. This code needs to first check if there are any peers to send things to, otherwise there's no point doing the work. Second, convert our new image from the image picker to a data object. Third, send it to all peers, ensure it gets delivered. And fourth, show an error message if there's a problem. Let's go ahead and scroll up to did finish picking media with info now and write that out as code. So here we are, here's the method we're interested in, did finish picking media with info. And after this call to reload data, we're gonna go ahead and do our work with the multi-peer. First, we'll make sure we have a session by saying guard let MC session is equal to MC session, else return. So if for some reason we haven't got a session, just bail out now. Then we'll say, if we have any connected peers, so if empty session dot connected peers dot count is greater than zero, if we have at least one peer connected to us right now, then we'll try and convert our, our image to ping data by saying, if let image data equals image dot ping data, now we'll try and send our data across. We'll say do try MC session dot send. For our data, we'll say our image data. To our peers, there's an array of peer IDs. We can just pass in MC session dot all connected peers like that. And for send data mode, you can choose between reliable and unreliable. In this case, we're going to use reliable, which will mean it'll always get there. Down here, if that fails, we'll catch all errors and say let AC equals a new UI alert controller with the title of send error. The message will pass in error.localized description 
alert style will be uh, dot alert like that. We're going to add one button to it by doing ac dot add action ui alert action with the title being OK, the style being dot default, and the handler being nothing at all, delete all that code, and then we'll call present ac animated true. So it shows the alert. Now one of the interesting quirks about Swift is that we automatically get this thing here, error, passed in, inside a catch block. You see, error isn't declared anywhere else in our code. It's not anywhere else, no error around here. But what happens is, when we get a throwing call go wrong, in this case, if we try and send things via our session and it goes wrong for some reason, Swift will move control to our catch block down here, and it will automatically create a new constant called error. It will tell us what went wrong. We can then read its localized description, which means tell us what went wrong in the user's local language, and we can use that for our alert message. It won't always be very helpful, but it works most of the time. And now to bring the whole thing together, we need just one more line of code, which is up here in our uh, start hosting method. We have our advertising assistant here from Multiplayer Connectivity Framework. We'll add one line of code below, which is MC Outrider Assistant dot start, like that. Start looking for connections to join to us. And with that now on my phone, I can go ahead and run the app in a similar way to run the app, and they should hopefully talk together nicely. So I'll press play now to run the new app on the iPhone XR simulator. And you'll see it up here is plus and the camera stuff. So on the simulator, I'll press plus and choose host a session. Now I'll go back to Xcode and choose my currently plugged in iPhone XS up here. There they are, Jules, then press play again. And what will happen is iPhone's uh, simulator and the real iOS device will both run the app at the same time through Xcode. So here on my phone here, I'll press plus and choose join a session. And you can see immediately iPhone XR appears. That is a simulator over here. I'll choose iPhone XR on my actual iPhone device. You'll see here, Jules wants to connect. I'll press accept. It's now connected nicely. I'll press done on my uh, iPhone, my physical iPhone. On my simulator, I'll choose a picture. I'll choose in moments, uh, these nice flowers from San Francisco and press choose. They appear over here in my app simulator and immediately also on my iPhone as well. So it's being sent across the wire using multi-peer connectivity.